What is going on? Welcome to episode 141 of the Nintendo Powercast. I'm your host and 64 Josh, player two, Mel. What's going on? Uh, all good. Destinot, player three. What's going on, man? Yeah, Destinot's here right now. It's flexing hard. What's up, folks? Oh my gosh. Oh my Headphone gosh. users. Sorry. <laughs> Headphone users. Too, Headphone man. users. We're sorry. We're sorry. He's he's got Red Bull in him. He's excited. This is a this is a new and improved Destinot. This is Flex and Hot. So here we go. I just I just used it up. What's up, guys? Sugar's gone. It's all over. All over. Okay. Well, if not 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 if the music you're hearing is from On Being Human. Check them out on Spotify and YouTube. <sighs> Yes, pudding. You can have a headphone alert. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> this is an unofficial Nintendo podcast. And if you'd like to get yourself a free book from Audible, go to audibletrial.com slash NPC. There, pick up something great like Console Wars, Ready Player One, Super Mario, How Nintendo Conquered America. Lots of good stuff there. There's some Star Wars books. Lots of good stuff. Go check it out. Audibletrial.com slash NPC. The chair I'm sitting in. Is from OPC. If you go to n64josh.com slash OPC, you will automatically save $10 at checkout. I love these chairs. I sit in this chair all the time. I cannot recommend it enough. Even if I wasn't a sponsor, I would tell everybody, or if they weren't a sponsor, I would tell everybody to buy these things. So that's n64josh.com slash OPC. Listen. We do this show live on twitch.tv slash n64josh. It's 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Tuesdays. Guys, there's going to be a new time for Thursday show. I'm actually going to do it in the afternoons so that I can free up an evening to be with my family. So it's looking like probably around 4.30, 5 o'clock. We're just going to kind of, we got to ease into this thing here because I've also switched up my streaming schedule. So instead of streaming at 4 a.m. for just an hour and a half, I'm now going to work, getting off work two hours earlier. And beginning my streams at about 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern, and streaming for two to three hours. So it's giving me much more time to stream, much more time with my family, and I'm pretty stoked for that. All right, we do have our first look this Friday. I have a couple game codes so far, but I think they're I don't I think they're under embargo, so I can't I don't think I can show them yet, so I'm not gonna even mention which ones they are. But we'll come up with something. Don't you worry. That's still going to be uh, actually, that may be 7 a.m. instead of 6. I may I may push it just a little bit. So I'm I'm trying to force myself to sleep a little bit more. But we'll see. We'll see. Sometimes mm. I just wake up. They're laughing at me right now. They're laughing mm, at me. Yeah, so, totally. yeah. All right. Well, hey, let's get to uh, let's get to our reviews and impressions. All right, Mel, I know you have been spending some time with uh, with some indie titles this last week. Why don't you go ahead and kick this off for us? Okay, so I picked up two things, but I only really played one. So I'm just going to talk about this one title this week. And just before I start, I haven't finished it. I'm sorry. Just been a little tired lately. So I've been actually sleeping. I'm like somebody. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> I don't sleep and I don't finish games. Crazy. <laughs> I think I'm pretty close to finishing this game. But, uh, the game I picked up this week is. Pretty much a book. Pretty much a so, book? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty much a book. It's called Will a Wonderful World. It's about basically there's these gods. There's two of them. There's like a dog and a girl. They get letters from people and they have to solve their problems. Letters can range from like, um, like I lost my keys to like, I want some fish to like, I don't know, stop this person from killing themselves, stop this, you know, like, stop this person from joining a gang, you know, like, Interesting. human trafficking. Wow. It's like all these very intense topics. So, uh, yeah, because when I got this game, you know, I just went in the <laughs> eShop, I just went around looking, you know, I saw the girl and the dog, and I'm like, there's a dog in it, so, you know, probably gonna like this, and the dog talks. <laughs> So that's like the easiest way to get me to buy something. Have a dog that talks that it's actually in the story a lot. And this one is. And uh <sighs> Okay. This is actually rated M. Oh. Shockingly, because I didn't know that. Okay. You know, I saw a dog. I'm like, is that I thought it was gonna be like simple stuff like, hey, I'm gonna be 
late for work, you know, don't like help me out here. Not like stop me from killing myself. Mm. Well, that's a it's little heavy. too, a uh, little more intense than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> so the gameplay of this is basically you get these stories and the game, after you read a certain story from a certain person, the game cuts certain parts of the story out, like into like these little fortune teller cookie lines. So you have like certain segments. They give you like three or four of them each round ago. And uh, your goal is to move these things around so you can change the story. Because the very first story to give you is a girl playing tennis at night. And, you know, it's getting really late. And she's like, oh, I, I got to go home. So she's like, she's picking up all the tennis balls. She's like, you know, leaving the tennis court. She's walking down this alley and she's like, oh, this is this very spooky alley. Oh, wait, the light's on. I can go down this alley. So, you know, she goes down the alley, she goes home. And then she's like, oh, crap. I lost my keys. Where can they possibly be? So, you know, they're back at the tennis court. But she can't go back out because it's really late now. Mm. So she's like, please, God, help me in this predicament that I caused myself in. So the game brings you back to the little story. You switch around some things. Like the part where it's like, oh, the alley was lit up. You take the lit up part and you put it by the tennis court. So the tennis court is lit up. So she noticed her keys fell. So she picks up the keys. Mm. And then when she, pass, when she passes by the alley, she's like, well, I'm not going down that dark alley. I'm going to die. So she takes another path. And, you know, that actually branches off into the story. Because then she meets this other guy. Well, she doesn't really meet him. She encounters this other guy. And then that guy is like, oh, you know, he comes into that story. And then that one comes into the next one. They all branch off. So because like right now I have like 12 characters. And even though they don't directly interact with each other, their stories interact with each other. Okay. They know someone someone else knew or an action they did affects another body's story. So it's like a butterfly effect thing. Because the game starts you off. You know, it's one little letter, each person. It's like, blah, blah, blah. You know, here you go. But as you move along during this, this game, you get, two, you get two letters at once. And these letters don't necessarily line up with each other. Like, uh, for example, like, you get a letter from a cat. He's like, I want a piece of fish. And then, like, the letter you get with it, it's like this detective, like, policeman. He's like, I'm about to die in this shootout. But you have to mix up the passages so you can, <laughs> you can like, go forward into the game. Hmm. So I know in one of them, it was like you replaced a gun with a piece of fish. <laughs> and then the cat's story had a gun in it. So, like, another cat was, like, shooting at a cat with a gun. What? Yeah. For the most part, they keep this very serious line. But for that particular story, it was like that. Oh, man. I was, like, suddenly intrigued. I'm like, <laughs> oh. There's a, uh, a three-frame comic strip that I'll have to put in the chat. It's like someone titled it The Greatest Three Frames in Comic Book History. And someone's like... Like, oh my god, does that monkey have a gun? And it just shows the monkey's like, blam, blam, blam. It's like, no context. So, I don't know, I thought of that. And I'm like, oh, oh, that's one little part. All right. Yeah, it's just one. Because hmm. when you get two letters, it, every time you do a letter, it wants to do the best possible ending, which is an S. You mm -hmm. know, you have the S, A, B, C, D, E, F. I think I saw like a Z once. Ooh. I don't know what that meant. I guess that was like oh, oh. really bad. That's what I would so, get. <laughs> Not to you again. <laughs> well, you would actually have to read because <laughs> this is the whole game. You have to read. You just can't go flip flop and stuff. I mean, you could, but you take forever. You know, get through everything. But anyway, when you get two letters, you have to get both of them with an S. So, like, you can do one side and be like, yes, I got the S, but the other guy got like a D. Mm. Like, you can't go forward. You have to get an S. And then later on, you know. There's like a brother and a sister, like they're worried about each other. You know, they're not necessarily writing to each other, but the the whole story is about finding each other. So, like, uh, the sister, like, this could be like years in advance. Like, she's like what, like six, seven years older than him. But uh, the letter we got from her is like 
present day, let's say present day, but the letter we got from him is like five years ago. But her actions still affect his actions five years ago. Mm. How? I don't know, but it does. So. Is this like the video game version of The Lake House starring Keanu Reeves <laughs> and Sandra Bullock, where they like communicate through time through the mailbox with letters? I mean, kind of, if you want to like go. Don't like ask that. me why I remember that movie. If you want to, if you want to go with that. I've never heard of it. I'm sure you have. I'm sure you watched it. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking of Lake House. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So, anyway, uh, like I said earlier, there's going gains, and S is the highs. But sometimes when you do another letter, you get new information, and that can change the outcome or can change n- not even like the ending of somebody else's letter. It can just change a certain part, and that part affects everybody somehow. So the S rank you got beforehand, which you thought was super duper, you know, the best it could actually be. It's actually crap. You have to do it over again and find the actual S ending. Because I was at a point during the game, because the, the game gives you letters each time you do one correctly, but I was at the point where I didn't get any new letters, and I had all S's. I was like, what do I do? Because each individual letter has certain outcomes, like, you know, like five or six of them. And the game has a history. It shows you, like, hey, you got a C on this one. You did blank motion, blank motion, blank motion. I'm like, okay, so you just, if you don't remember which order you put these phrases in, the game has a section for it. So you can just look in it and like, hey, okay, I'm not just randomly doing things like uh, I think Josh would do. Did you, are yeah. you getting a little bit of a Phoenix, right? Uh, vibe from it? No, no. Phoenix is more about collecting evidence and, you know, going to court and stuff like that. This is more like a... I hate to say it, but you know, like when you take the SATs, you know, the little reading section where you had to like read the passage and critically think about what's going on in the story. Mm. It's not always just like, hey, did this person do blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yes, this person, that's not it. No, you have to critically think because this game is a, it's considered a puzzler, but there's no actual puzzle action. I mean, you're not like sliding blocks, you're not counting things, you know, you just have to think critically. You're not and screaming you, objection? No, no objection. I mean, I was screaming a lot at this, but for different reasons. <laughs> but uh, as you move forward in the game, it introduces new techniques through these letters and limitations. Like uh, some of these passages will start to have numbers on them. It's like one, two, three. So, okay, you can put these in order, but you can't put like three above one. You have to put like one, two, or two, three, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, you think it's easy because it's like, oh, this letter only has like four answers. But it's like, oh, yeah, I can't move this one because this number has to go with this one. And then sometimes you get these passages with uh, an hour, like these two hours, they have to go together. So it's like, oh, I got to take this set and put it here. I'm like, oh, wait, I can't do that because that breaks that part of the story. I'm going to get an F there. This person has an S. This one has an F. I can't move forward. So you're just sitting there like an idiot. Like, how do I do this? You just, you know, going back and forth, going back and forth. And But the game gives you clues if you leave it on normal. There's actually in hard mode. So you can just not have any clues at all. You can just go all in. You know, that's what Josh would do. You just like, I don't understand anything. I don't know what to do. But the game gives you clues when you get not the correct ending it wants you. If you're actually reading the passage, there's, there would be this uh, red line of text. And whatever the red line in the text is, that's your clue. It's like, hey, you messed up here. Now, if you see any kind of orange text, that is incredibly important information, and they usually don't show you again. So you have to really pay attention, because hmm. the dog, you know, they're doing a little tutorial, he tells you this. He's like, hey, when you ever see orange, pay attention. And he even tests you. Like, <laughs> take, he, take a screenshot. He, yeah, you can, yeah, I mean... That's what it's there for. You can take it. I was actually surprised this game actually has a video captioning too. I took little videos. I was like, wow. Like, cause like this is all story. I was like, man, they let this slide. I guess they forgot, man. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, cause he tests you. you. He's like, he gives you a random question. You have to answer it. He's like, oh, if you get it wrong, I'm going to reset the game. 
<laughs> and it's funny. it's worded so weirdly too because it seems like it would be very important but it's like did i say very important extremely important or, n- or incredibly important I'm like i remember important was the word i don't remember which adjective you used dog thanks a lot and <laughs> did there was a story did he going reset on your game oh, he, yeah he got me he got me <laughs> he'd get me <laughs> little slide dog got me. <laughs> and there's a story going on between them too because you're playing as the girl the girl has amnesia she's like i don't know what i'm doing i'm a god somehow okay i change lives and she questions throughout the game is like hey i'm helping these people out but their lives are not getting any better yeah that's another thing this game is called wonderful world i'm not seeing what's so wonderful about this game because I have multiple characters where I do the correct thing, you know, the correct thing, and their lives are still crap. <laughs> so it's like real life. It, it is. I'm, like, I'm trying to help these guys out, and I'm just not seeing any positive thing here. <laughs> like, even when it's positive, it turns negative. So I just don't understand, but I'm not finished yet. So... You know, that's that's my game for the week. Here's the, here's for hope. And tell us the name of it one more time. Well, a wonderful world. All right. So I like the concept of what you're describing because th- uh, there are certain games in the past which um, played on the whole, like, kind of like choose your path, you know, like the one that comes to my mind is like the original Mass Effect where it was like, oh, you know, you can be good. You can be bad. Uh, lots of games have done this, but. I didn't like the fact that, well, for one thing in, in Mass Effect, the original one, like you could only give kind of neutral answers. You had to unlock like if you wanted to be good or bad. And even then it gave you like the whole like, oh, if you choose the blue answer, that's the good answer. And then if you yeah, choose right. the red answer, it's bad. And it's like <laughs> and then it, it changed almost, where if you choose the top answer, you're good. And the bottom yeah. answer. Is yeah, bad. And even if it wasn't color coded, you knew yeah. Okay, if I choose the top one, that's good. Right, you know, it's like, right. so you knew, but it sounds like this one kind of keeps it a little bit more ambiguous, would you say? Like, as yeah, to yeah, yeah, cause, what uh, the right answer is? Yeah, because uh, there's like a certain story. It's like mm-hmm. this guy has to rob this place. He doesn't want to rob the place because he's actually a good guy, but he got stuck in this predicament and he has to rob this place. And like one of like the good answers is he accidentally shoots the guy, and but that's one of the good answers because that gives greater good, right? But the, but the guy was good, and the guy behind the counter was good. He was like the guy behind the counter was like, please, please, don't shoot me. Like I will do whatever you want, and he accidentally shoots him, mm-hmm. but that was good. Hmm. Or like, uh, uh, like uh, maybe uh, stabbing somebody to death is a uh, a good a good answer that's an s rank somehow but you don't find that i mean do you find out later on through the story like why that was the good answer or does it ever yeah i mean yes and no because like some of them yeah they turn out to be actually good but they still find themselves in a different situation and they Hmm. probably wouldn't been in that situation if they didn't previous thing but they had to do previous thing to get into that certain situation so this other person can find them but then this other person finds them and they get in a different situation and <sighs> so, so you're playing the the game crash the movie mm-hmm. the movie version of the, the like the game version yeah. of the movie crash like i was wondering like it, it almost sounds like you can play this however you want but as long as the way you want to play it is the way we wrote it yeah, because you, you know, still like, have to get the best ending to advance. Yeah, well, so to get the best ending, you have to do the bad things that they want you to. It's like they're forcing you into that direction. Because, like, I was first mm. when I was first playing it. You know, I was collecting all the possible different endings. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna get them all. Like a little star next to the thing. I'm like, yes, I want all the stars next to the stories. But then I was like reading some of these alternate endings i'm like no oh god no i don't want to collect these things anymore i just want the best possible ending for this person because they don't deserve all these extra crap and then you know it just still turns Hmm. out bad i'm hoping when i get to the end i I don't know how far i am because again i unlock 12 people and i don't know if each person has a certain number of stories or they all have the same number of stories it seems like some of them have more than others like 
the police people, they probably have more. Like the cat, I think I only did like two or three. And every time that little mailbox appeared, because there's a mailbox that comes with the letters, I was hoping for the cat because the cat has like the least depressing ones. Hmm. Like, you know, he just wants some fish. You know, he wants like a, a, a little pipe to lay into. He just wants to cross the street. You know, like this is the stuff I can get behind. But like <laughs> all these other people, man. So they should have just taken the cat part of the game and expanded on that is what you're saying. See, the cat part of the game is, like, what I thought this game originally was. Mm. Like, I thought, like, maybe they would throw in, like, this really deep, you know, uh, intense moment every now and then. But it's, like, every now and then you get a cat moment. Mm. That's a little break. Okay. Mm. That's a little break. Hmm. But I am enjoying seeing how this plays out. And, of course, I'm going to go and finish it. Because I want to say I'm at least halfway. Because they show you a chart. You know, they all branch off. It's like a family tree kind of thing. And it kind of looks like my chart's like half. So I think that's going to be good for me. Okay. Cool. Cool. Destin, you play anything? Any new Nintendo stuff or old PC so stuff? I tried. I tried to play more of The Missing. I was talking with Mel's about this before we started the show. Um, I don't know if anyone else is playing this game or if it's just her and I that bought it. Um, <laughs> Pretty sure it's like, just like, like ever in the history of every. <laughs> at least we were at least like 20% of the same. <laughs> so uh if you guys do decide to pick it up or if you have it now and you haven't gotten too far into it um i, I ran into a potential i don't know if i would call it game breaking just extremely annoying which is where mm. i was in a section of the game and i i turned it off and i can't remember how i turned it off i don't know if i like set my switch to sleep and then later turned it off or i i don't think i exited the game properly basically okay. And I think I kind of got a corrupted save file because when I turned it back on, I was outside of a building and I literally turned around and probably walked like the equivalent of like three feet in game. And when I entered the door, it just totally crashed on me, like straight back to the desktop. And this continued to happen. Uh, my fix, though, and this would be the fix I would I guess I would recommend is just start the chapter over because the chapters aren't that long. So it's not like you're losing tons of progress. And being that it's a puzzle game, you've probably figured out the puzzle to get to that point. So it shouldn't take you too long. But uh, I did play that. Um, I got past that part. Like I said, reloaded the chapter, went back in, got through it. So if you ever encounter that stuff, uh, I would recommend that. Um, I did play another game. Um, I'll ask I'll ask you guys this. What, what would you say? I'll ask each of you. Uh, Mel's, what would you say is your favorite genre of game? Favorite genre? Uh, probably platformers. Okay, so platformers. Josh, how about you? Shooters. Shooters. Okay, so shooters, platformers. Um, I know another another popular genre of game is like brawlers. Some people like uh, twin stick shooters. Uh, someone in the chat mentioned battle royale. <laughs> Pudding. Um, <laughs> uh, well, imagine that someone likes battle royale games. Um. Yeah, shooters. Some people like text adventures. Other people like uh, kind of like what we talked about a second ago, the choose your own adventures. Um, I literally played a game that had those all rolled into one. It's called Near Atom. Would I go play it? <laughs> I'm we, not even surprised. We walked right into oh, it. Oh, look. Ribbon Bell said RPG. Yep. <laughs> got that too. See, I almost said that. But I was like, wait a minute. No, this is going to be some kind of trick. Well, I blame <laughs> you guys for this. So I a while back said I was going to finish dragon quest 11 i'm not playing anything else until i'm done with it right and then someone brought up something else and then the oh the missing came out so i started playing the missing and then someone in chat was like does not check out this picture and it's a picture of near uh i'm sorry 2b from near she's in the new soul caliber Six, i'm getting very off topic here because i don't think that's on the nintendo platform is it no well it should be i know nintendo's listening so it used to be go ahead and go ahead and make that for that thank the you good old days on the gamecube um yeah, so, but I'll come back around to Nintendo because I really hope this game does come to Nintendo. And I think I cracked the code on this. So <laughs> I found an old interview. So when the game first came out, Nier Automata, it came out for PlayStation 4 and PC. Yep. Yes. Then when asked about, is it coming out on other platforms? No, sorry, folks, it isn't. Well, lo and behold, a year or so later, it comes out on Xbox, right? Yeah, like digital only, yeah. Uh, is it digital only? Yeah, I digital so. only. Okay, so it comes out. So now we have it on the Xbox as well, right? 
Well, a lot of times they had said, well, we would love for this game to come out on Switch. And people are like, when's it coming out for Switch? When's it coming out for Switch? I finally, they always said like, hey, well, whenever they pay us to make it for Switch is when it'll come out on Switch. Hmm. I dug way back and found an interview where the creator said, well, if it comes out on Switch, it's far off, probably about two years. Well, this was about a year and a half ago that this interview came out. Hmm. And then he also said, well, if we bring it other to this is before the Xbox was even announced. They said, well, if we bring it to other platforms, let's stagger it. So we all have jobs for the next, you know, five years. Inch. So possibly in six months it could come out. And this game is still coming. I shouldn't say six months, uh, but I would say maybe in the next year we could see it because this game did come out like over a year ago and we're still getting random stuff for it. Like we got DLC and then Soul Calibur is getting near dlc and it's like clearly if the game wasn't still somewhat relevant in people's minds why would they even bring this stuff out Mm -hmm. you know and we've seen in the past a lot of times especially with uh even even the smash series right they include things and then all of a sudden it's like you know it's keeping it relevant in people's minds and you know whether it's coincidence or not we see a new game for that particular thing you know down the road so fingers crossed Again, that's like my 11 out of 10 game, and I really hope everyone gets to play it someday. Um, <laughs> hopefully it's coming to the Switch. I'm calling it now. So when it does come out on the Switch, um, I'll have called it. And if it doesn't come out, then no one's going to reference this episode anyway. So Right, right. <laughs> no, we did just reference you, not the episode. Mm, yeah. <laughs> They'll be like, hey, it never came out. I'll be like, eh, sucks for you. <laughs> so for my first look this week, we played Windjammers. And I got to say, it's the complete opposite of what Mel described in her game. But Windjammers is a blast. Like, <laughs> it's basically future Pong. That's all that is. It's it's just Pong with muscles and sunglasses and uh, beach bodies, I guess. You mean with flexing? Yeah, with flex. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There was flexing. There was definitely flexing. So, um, it, uh, it's pretty fun. 1499 online multiplayer. Here's what's funny. I jumped in for my first look, went into ranked after playing with super Nintendo. I'm like, Hey, let's play ranked. We were the only two people <laughs> playing the game. No, we're not selling this game, Josh. No one else was playing it, but Hey, we had a really good time. I actually, um, it, my kids had birthdays over the weekend. So I, my son wanted to go to, uh, we went and got coffee and played. Uh, we were going to play Fortnite while we drank our coffees, but we forgot that he forgot to update <laughs> and it was still like on oh five gosh. or whatever. So um, we ended up playing wind jammers for a while. And some of the other, like we played a little more tower fall, which my goodness, when you play multiplayer is so fun, so fun. So, um, yeah, overall, pretty, pretty, pretty fun. I'm, I'm excited for the sequel to come out. Like, I, who knows what they're going to do, how much they're going to add to it. But um, to Towerfall or Windjammer? Windjammers Wind 2 is coming out. <laughs> so, so there you go. There's my, uh, other than I've been playing Smash, you know, of course, and just getting like beat, beat down in four glory continually. Um, I did want to add, I did play a Nintendo game. Yeah. Ooh. I played Super Dodgeball. Yeah, did you? Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, Totally not as hard as I remember it because I went through and blew everyone away and won. I played it on like medium or normal or whatever it is. There you go. I just remember that game being insanely hard when I was younger. Yeah. And I couldn't beat the Russians. And then you have to like fight yourself at the end. And it's like, ooh, Shadow USA. Um, ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Whatever. The game's like a thousand years old. George Washington made it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> So yeah, no, I did play that. It was fun though. I do enjoy that game. I would, I, I might even pay money for an HD remake of that. Really? Hmm. Who are you? They could add RPG elements. It'd be awesome. Because you're like the only person I know that's like, hey, yeah, that's actually good. Still, like everybody else I talk to, like, no, that's, that's, no, no. Mm, All the gosh. characters are like asset ripoffs from Double Dragon. They're great. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> You've already paid for the service. Just go play the free game. Yeah, it's not free. You're paying for the game. It's free. It's not free. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. 
Are we going to break it down by game? The two dollars? <laughs> is, what, no. is that what's happening right no, now? No, you know what's really stupid? What's with the other Legend of Zelda that's on there? That's the that's the easy that's mode. The easy one. It's the par- participation trophy. You have all your items. Mine didn't. Well, uh, that when you like, st- you're supposed to have all the items. Uh, I thought that's all I read. I didn't play it. I but. had like four. Well, yeah, I think it sets you off with some. Uh, not and maybe I think it still wants cash. you to collect, so you can get that Zelda experience <laughs> a little bit. You know. All right. This is like okay. I was talking about creativity earlier about you messing with my camera. So the guy that invented Legend of Zelda <laughs> didn't even want the map to come with the game. He wanted you to roam around, and now they're putting out easy mode, spitting in his face. <laughs> I mean, you can just pull the map on your phone anyway. You can't really point. stop them. That's not the point. <laughs> yeah, but a thousand years ago, when the game came out, when George Washington made it, it didn't have that. You couldn't get that. The the map. Like, where would you get that other than Nintendo Power? Uh, Unbelievable. To, I can't do this. Have to I mean, you write can, a letter, you can, maybe do a photocopy or something. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Totally go to Kinko's or they, whatever the oh, previous Kinko, Kinko, Kinko things. wasn't around. It was like previous Kinko's. <laughs> no, you probably there. would have had to talk to your friends on the playground and get this map that someone like got a rubbing of, you know, like Indiana Jones did. And they would do it wrong just to, you know, torment you. Yeah, like, right. You Turn know. left. Here's, <laughs> here's where you find the gun in, in The Legend of Zelda. <laughs> yeah, I got the map for my brother who works at Nintendo. All right. <laughs> right. All right. Well, hey, let's get to the news. Today was a good day because Nintendo announced that there is a Smash Bros. Direct on Thursday, November 1st. I have the 11th here because I wrote the one twice, but Hmm. 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Right, Mel? 7 a.m.? Yeah, 7 a.m. Yeah, so that's kind of early. It's an early one. Yeah. Um, and then followed by a Treehouse Live showcasing more Smash, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, Yoshi's Crafted World, and Diablo 3. Such a great mix of <laughs> games there. And uh, <laughs> this direct is going to be around 40 minutes long. Wow. Yeah, for Smash. Yeah. yeah. But one minute, one minute per character? I guess. I don't even, not even that. Like, I don't know. M- Mel, what do you think we're going to see from this direct? I think we're going to see the last couple of characters. Like, I'm thinking, like, four max. Like, the, that's what we're getting. I don't think we're getting, like, seven. I don't think we're getting more than five. And uh, they have to show off the single-player mode. And I can see them dragging that out for, like, a good ten minutes just on that. Because I have no clue what the single-player mode could be. Because I'm just going to assume, like, some kind of adventure style. Maybe there's, like, a boss... Like at the end of each kind of level, you know, you see like a, this famous boss from like a certain series. Like a, they show off the monster hunter, monster Rathalos. Thing, you know, yes, I was not even going to pronounce that. Call so me a nerd, please. <laughs> well, thank you for being a nerd for this particular moment. <laughs> <laughs> but that- yeah, I can see it being like that. You have like a level or two, and then you have like this meaty kind of boss fight as a new kind of reamped adventure mode hmm. of the single player. And maybe there was like some other goofy little mode they added too. It's just, I would be very cautious of this because I'm seeing a lot of people, especially with this uh, leak going around and I'm particularly not sure if this leak is true. There, I mean, there's a lot of craziness going on with it. Like they're looking at the, the you know, the, wallpaper background thing they're looking at every mm-hmm. individual little uh <laughs> pixel art <laughs> every, you can possibly yeah. look you know just looking for like oh this is off balance this thing doesn't line up perfectly you know i'm like i'm not doing all that man nerds <laughs> yeah pretty much pretty much and so what like, it- oh go ahead i'm like the supposedly leaked people i'm not really personally hyped for any of them but if they end the game i'm like okay they're in the so this is not like a life or death moment situation for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it uh, uh, the few sources that I have chatted with have said this is this the leak is fake, and you know. So we'll see if it isn't, and all those things are there. Cool, I'm down. If it, you know, the the internet's been kind of. Like there's been some pretty toxic people talking about this stuff. Like all of their hopes and dreams are going to be crushed if this is not in the game. And you're like, 
you've got to set higher hopes and dreams for better things. Like do, do something, but I don't know. What do you, what are you thinking? What do you think we're going to see from, uh, from this direct Destiny? Um, yeah, I, th- I think I agree with Mel. Maybe I don't know how long or how much of the single player their show, because I mean, let's be honest, Smash has never been about single player. And I'm wondering, is this going to be single player like the way a lot of multiplayer only games have a single player in that the first level is just like the first stage, yeah. but they have word bubbles now above their heads before they fight. And then you defeat them and you're like, oh, great. That was the first level, but that's no different than just playing online in brawl. You actually had the subspace emissary where you ran around like a like a plat, like a 2D platformer mm-hmm. and actually worked your way through levels and had branching paths and things like that mm. to where you could feel like cinematics and stuff. OK, different bosses and things like that. So they it, it could end up being something like that. Everybody thinks it says spirits based on unscrambling what it said like spirit mode okay. some people think it says skyrim um you know just because we need another version of that somewhere <laughs> i mean he would let that happen <laughs> i'm hoping this is the start of what the equivalent of the like marvel cinematic universe is and the end boss of the single player ends up being the main boss in metroid prime 4 <laughs> But why and it just all <laughs> links together because isn't that the big well that's probably the next big <laughs> nintendo game that people want um, um people on the internet carry on yeah <laughs> so I that mean, that's, what that's what i'm hoping for let's link it all together and then it's just going to come around to where like you know so, Mar- so after mario the, and everyone's in the same universe so after it's in metroid where does it go from there like uh the boss yeah well, I don't know. That's just they just throw the boss in. Like, come on, the boss for one of them was a giant hand. I mean, it's, people it's aren't expecting too much from the bosses of this game. So, hey, if you pull no, that camera uh, out, it's actually Waluigi. That's uh, his hand. So, <laughs> speculation. It doesn't have. Well, who knows? Maybe under that glove is this bad. crazy alien, and like that's the alien in Metroid Prime <laughs> Four. So, we, we and then Sigourney have- Weaver shows up and just kills them all. That could also happen. <laughs> that might not be a universe they want to cross into. <laughs> Probably not. Possibly not, no. All right. <laughs> so here's to hoping we get um, lots of information on the uh, online, right? Like what kind of modes are going to be available? Is there going to be a ranking system of any kind? You know, what, mm. how's it going to, pl- like, can we do tournaments? There is, there was some documents or a picture. I didn't, I don't have it right here in the notes that, it was something from Japan that, that said something along the lines of 32 players. <laughs> and so everybody's thinking tournaments, you know, are we going to be able to spectate some of these things? You know, if you think about games like uh, that just came out, like the dragon ball fighters, that game was uh, you kind of run around in a group to an area and then you start fighting with, with some people in an, in a certain area in, in, in the dead or alive games, dead or alive four, you'd actually go into a lobby and they actually had a screen displayed in the room you were in where you could watch the other players fighting. Good. Out. No. So that was kind of, <laughs> so, I mean, that was kind of cool, but I mean, I just, I don't know what the, what the plan is here. Hopefully th- there is tournaments. Hopefully they talk about making our friends list bigger. Cause that would be super helpful. Ah. And, uh, <laughs> and, and then, of course, spirit mode. Hopefully, if that's what it is, you know, hopefully we'll see. Um, we'll get the get the lowdown on that. All that being said, I still hope there's some surprises to this game. I hope there's some characters that we don't know about until they get unlocked in the first 15 minutes, because that's how <laughs> crazy people are, you know. So that's who would be your surprise, like character, like who would make you go insane? That's not Master Chief. Oh, like I don't, I don't necessarily want it to be somebody that I'm like. I don't even care if it's like a character that I'm, I'm wanting really bad. It's just more along the lines of like, just don't, don't give us all the info, you know, like just, Uh, just hold a little bit back. Yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. And it may not be the case. It may not be the case. We may end up, uh, we may end up, we may end up seeing everything, but I mean, you know, maybe it is uh, somebody from arms or somebody from Xenoblade at that. uh, That's still a hidden character that we have to unlock at the, uh, 
at the end by, you know, completing the spirit mode or something like that. Can you that. imagine if it was arms? Can you really imagine if it was arms? How pissed their note would be. He's like, I did all of this for arms. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Well, that now I wanted even more. So, you know, I'm just going to be honest here. Because, so. I mean, it only sold two million now, guys. Then it's dead. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, so that's happening at 7 a.m. And then 10, 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern. And it's followed by Treehouse Live, where we're going to see even more Smash gameplay. So I mean, we could be sitting close to like an hour for Smash. I'm, um, you know. No, it's gonna be over an hour because you know they're gonna slow Smash like three or four times. It's not gonna just be that one time they showed. Yeah, the other thing that I'm, I, I am imagining is going to happen is there's going to be some kind of pre-order bonus with this game, right? Like something that is going to uh, lure people in to start pre-ordering it now. What does that look like? Well, maybe you go to your pre-order at any of the retailers and they print you the uh, early access to the beta. We've seen other companies do that, right? Like, Mm -hmm. and I'm speculating that there's a beta going to be coming out either uh, more than likely um, next weekend is the, the, is where I'm imagining it's going to be. We'll probably be able to download it now and then, you know, that's, they're going to say that during the show, download now, and then they'll fire it up for us. And, you know, we'll go from there. If I will let you guys know, if we can play each other, like if we can do one V ones in ultimate, we are going to be having a tournament put on by the, uh, by my other podcast, the smash bros cast. So, um, you can tune into that or, um, make sure you're in the discord for more details, but that will be happening. So, I'm just thinking that they want to make sure that this game is getting, is getting the pre-orders. Maybe there's, maybe there's a character tied to a pre-order, right? Make sure to get this before the mm-hmm. seventh. I I don't like it either. Right. I'm not a fan of this kind of I mean, stuff. I could totally do that. Yeah. But I mean, they kind of did that with Mewtwo. Like, they, exactly. They right. Yeah. If, if you had both games, you got, you got Mewtwo. So, and I don't think they would hold it out like you couldn't pay for it later, but I think it would be free if you do the pre-order. And so, um, I'm just, uh, I'm just thinking that that, that will be something that, that happens. And if it doesn't, I mean, that's fine. I'm wrong, but it just seems like, you know, having the date so close to Christmas and having it fall after black Friday that they would want to incentivize people to to really pre-order this game, you know? And, uh, so, you know, we'll see. It's also smash. Do you really have to incentivize people to buy it? I mean, what's not, the competition where like, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, give you, I'll give you this one, one, for instance, though, I've been streaming it. Right. And one of my viewers watches with his son who was like, I want this game now, dad, you know, like he had no clue what smash even was. I mean, there's going to be, there's going to be kids who have parents that are not informed about this game, you know? And so, um, if there's big, you know, Hey, pre-order this now when they're out shopping on black Friday and get this extra content, it, you know, it may be the kind of thing that just really helps, helps uh move the numbers because they they and we're going to talk about numbers they have uh they have a lot of 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 numbers they are trying to reach so we're going to jump into their here's basically their their financials their the sales how many units when it comes to switch they're at 22 million um 22.86 million units sold 111 million Point one zero million units sold of of the software, right? I don't know, and it doesn't show right here if it if that I, that must be digital and physical is my guess. I don't see any like little asterisks or anything like that that doesn't include it. So I'm assuming that it's that it is physical and and digital. And I have a link to this if you guys want to check it out. It goes through all the systems going all the way back to the um the Famicom and the uh and the NES. So 
Um, DS is still going strong with 73, uh, 73 million units and <laughs> 371 million units of software. <laughs> like it's, it's crazy. Who's still buying this? It's crazy. Dude, I'm, Why? I, I'm probably buying two this Christmas for nep- nieces and nephews, you know, like unbelievable. I know what's wrong with me, right? This is, there's a meme out there that says, uh, we'll stop making Skyrim when you stop buying it. Right. <laughs> so the 3DS is going to go on forever because people keep buying it. And they're like, why don't they come out with the new handhelds? Because you keep buying it. <laughs> they're probably going to repackage this one again. <laughs> Just make a different, slightly different color green. Josh is like, oh, I gotta get this one too. Gotta get that shade. Well, Xbox is doing the this X18 event. And mm-hmm. Super Nintendo posted in the Discord, he's speculating that uh, we might see the announcement of the Minecraft 2DS XL at that at that event. I'm like, no way, dude. No way. But- uh, well, they do own Minecraft. Exactly. Really- so it's not necessarily like a conflict of interests. Right. They would make profits on it. They would yeah, make profits on they're it. They're making so. money on each one sold. And so here's I mean, the, I have it at the bottom of our list, but Phil Spencer had lunch with Nintendo during E3. This was kind of going around the internet today and yesterday. And oh, it's smash lunch, confirmed. Man. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's supposed to be Banjo, but it's going to be, uh, I mean, what's his face? Blocky man. Uh, Steve from Minecraft. Yeah. It's going to be Steve. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could see that. <laughs> it's going to be nothing. Uh, it's going to be, can't, uh, was it Cameo? Wasn't that her name? From the... <laughs> oh, it was like, yeah, the, it was like the third launch title. game to come out. <laughs> They're like, we need to make money on that one. Come on, guys. Yeah. Let's put it in Everybody there. Everybody wants that one. <laughs> so, so I mean, who knows? We don't know what these, what these partnerships look like. Is that going to mean that there's going to be, you know, rare characters uh, in Smash Bros.? That's that's some of the you just the, want rare characters in Smash. Oh, Bros. dude, yeah. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. Like if anybody's listened mm-hmm. to the other show or hasn't, I mean, I'm being like, hey, let's get a Microsoft pack where we get Master Chief and we get we get Joanna Dark and we get there Banjo. It there you know, it is. Get You're them all. Food. Get okay. them all in there. Well, <laughs> hey, I've been waiting for Joanna Dark and Smash since Melee when they showed the landmine for the the proximity mine. So mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I still holding. Mean, I've not oh. forgotten <laughs> Jet Force Gemini twins. Yes, let's get them in there. <laughs> the Blast Corpse has assist trophies. Let's go. Let's go. So, um, all right. Well, moving on to uh, the top selling Switch titles. Okay. Mario Odyssey, Super Mario Odyssey, 12 million units is the, is the top selling, but close on its tail, Mario Kart. Hmm. <laughs> Which is, well, is this like- overall or last week? It's overall. This is overall 12 million. Because neither would surprise me. Like, <laughs> if this was just last week, I'd be like, yep, again, people keep buying it. It's like, Josh is like in heaven right now. It's like, Mario's first and second. But which Mario is going to be number one overall? Hmm. Is it going to be my favorite card? I don't know. Tune in next time. Do you, wait, do you think I like Mario or something? No, no, no. No, not even a little bit. <laughs> I have a new Mario poster, guys. It's actually a piece of fabric, but I love it. So, the real question is: Did you take the poster that was there off the wall before putting that up? Eh, he moved it to another place. Nope, that's it's cool. covering it up. <laughs> oh no! So now even your posters, like your amiibo, are encased in other things. <laughs> yes. Fantastic! It's just smothered by Mario. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound. Never mind. Mm. Um, so <laughs> next up, we have the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild is at ten million, and then Splatoon, seven million. Almost seven and a half million. This makes me question life, but one two switch is two point six four million <laughs> units. <laughs> I mean, it was the launch, you know. Yeah, you know there was a good party ish game. If you it, can, it really you is, it, buy it, my you know? my kids have gotten their money's worth out of it, so um, that's for sure. Mario Tennis Aces, 2.16 million units. Arms, 2.10 million units. Kirby Star Allies, 2.10 million units. Uh, Donkey Kong, 1.67. And Xenoblade Chronicles 2, 1.53 million units. Beautiful. Now, is this list all games or just Nintendo games? This is from. This is pretty much the. Like, this is Nintendo Nintendo's games? like financial report, like. That they okay, just, so they weren't reporting on other third parties. So. No, I think they okay. come out on their own. And say that gotcha. numbers, yeah, they different. Want to. Like I think there's like NPDs and things like that that come out like weekly. You can kind of check those. Mm-hmm. So 
Um, I think those are monthly. Um, that's what I meant. I'm my bad. Yeah. Monthly. Um, yeah. So you, and you can check again, you can continue, you can check Wii U, you can check, they have, because I mean, Mel, didn't you just mention something about Mario Kart in my chat from the Wii? Yeah. It actually sold 40 K doing this fiscal year for them. <laughs> so Mario where, Kart Wii. Where is that selling though? Because I mean, I, I don't know. It did 40, 40 K, you know? Well, wasn't, if I remember correctly, wasn't the very last bundle? Yeah, but like, Wii when U, is the last time Mario you saw Kart? a Wii on shelves? Like, even a bundle? Like, you see a used I, I one, yeah, know. but you see like... Hey, f- that Fred Meyer store that I talk about, they still have the Wii games. I think Walmart still has Wii games. Amazon? Amazon's I mean, still gonna have you them. You get yeah. brand new stuff, I'm assuming still off of Amazon. Yeah, so... so. But like, who's still buying Like, it? who's buying it? Like... <laughs> I've never under okay so because I mean, the online for that game is dead now too so you can't even play yeah. online right so like I get the feeling that you I mean the three of us are probably similar in that if we don't buy a console like within like during launch it's probably very close to launch that we buy the console mm-hmm. yeah, we gotta realize there, there's people out there that will like buy console like it's almost like they wait for the console to be dead to where they could pick it up for ninety nine dollars and just scoop get up a bunch of ten games. games for like ten bucks. Yeah. Well, not Nintendo games, but like other systems. Yeah, yeah you can do that easily. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Nintendo games are still fifty nine ninety nine. Right. For some of them. Um, but no, like my cousin did that. I remember she, her, her mom bought her the, the original Nintendo with like Duck Hunt and Mario and a bunch of games, and I was like. Super Nintendo come out like next week? Like why? Why? But <laughs> I think it's probably for the non gamer. And if you can think about it, let's say you're a super casual and you're like, oh, Wii U for fifty bucks. And I look, the games are, you know, on on Amazon for for cheap or eBay. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I could maybe those are the people. My I, I don't know. My wife's been finding Wii and Wii U games at garage sales. I don't think those roll into the numbers. Yeah, I don't know. No, no, no. No, but I'm just saying, like, if you were, you know, the, that's that's what's out there now. Like, for you can get, I, I got Mario 3D World and the new Super Mario Bros. U for five bucks each. You know? Actually, I hope there oh, is a guy. There is a Japanese guy out there in a suit that's probably walking around a garage sales and counting numbers sold. I could, I could see uh, it. <laughs> he's probably buying those copies and just like, we. <laughs> I think I, the, and the last one I found, mm-hmm. Wii U games, I got like Assassin's Creed and Batman and, but yeah, so. You know. yeah, I'm sure How many times have you played worried. those, Josh? <laughs> uh, let's see. Up next, we have this is this is kind of interesting. Nintendo said they wanted to sell 20 million units this fiscal year. Like, I finally got to the bottom. Like, because n- nobody ever says what the total is, right? They always just say 20 million. Well, 20 million this fiscal year, or 20 million total units. At the end of this fiscal year, well, it's 20 million units this fiscal year, which I believe would have them at like 34 million around there. Like, I I don't know. Did we end at like 14 or 18 million at the end of the fiscal year? I thought it was around 14 million. I think I think think it I think it surpassed the Wii U, which was 13 million. So um, real accomplishment right there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Winning. So so. So here's the thing. They um, Bloomberg sat down with the um, the new president of Nintendo. Yeah. Shellshock Prime says it surpassed the GameCube, which was 21 million. Yes. So it has surpassed GameCube, which is pretty cool. I think the N64 is next. So this is from I have a Nintendo Life article here, and it says um, Nintendo's uh, newly appointed president has responded to the slowdown because the, the switch sales have kind of slowed down and they're not, they're not staying um, on the track they wanted them to be. He says, so they slowed down by noting that the 20 million unit target um, was, was put in place as a uh, purposefully challenging number to hit. He said from the beginning, we decided to, we decided on a target that would be challenging to reach, not easy. And this holiday season, uh, this holiday season battle begins now. Right. So, I mean, he's, I mean, he's been, he's been sounding like he's coming out with guns blazing, since since they put him in uh in the position of president right like this it's he's it's no joke so here's another quote uh um 
as far as just on how to continue growing the switch it says we, we need continuous growth. We must keep releasing new software that includes DLC and other contents for big titles that are already out and more focus on online play. Lastly, more genres and diverse games to draw in people who don't currently play on the switch. That doesn't even sound like it came from somebody at Nintendo. That sounds like there's people that used to work for Nintendo that are rolling over in their graves right now because well, it used to be Bill like Spencer wrote that at a <laughs> at lunchtime. That was at so lunch. He's far. like, here's what you want to say to Bloomberg. <laughs> Right. But I mean, here's what I take away from this, though. What have we been saying since Mario Party came out? Why doesn't this game have online? Right. What does this say? And focus and more focus on online play like. They they know what's lacking. They they right there, that that statement really really shows that they know what's lacking and what they need to do to get more switches uh, into people's hands. And look at what they've done. We've got a blizzard game coming out this Friday. You know, we've, we've seen um, plenty of Bethesda, like they're the, the switch has become this machine. That's like what genre is not represented. Civilizations coming out. You know, it's, it's pretty much got something for everybody. It it's it's crazy. It's crazy. It, it's really uh, encouraging to see basically the growth and the mindset that is not the old Nintendo that was like, you know, like no, it's our way or the highway. You know, like they're like, no, we need to sell stuff and we need to do what the customer wants to to sell that product. I don't know. That's not. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's encouraging to see that they've taken a new approach because with the old approach of Nintendo, which is kind of like like you just said, like my way or the highway, I think that only flies for people that were there like at the beginning, you know, that are the hardcore Nintendo fans. And that's that's cool and all. I mean, if, if those people are happy, then at least you're like, okay, well, the 300,000 hardcore fans that we have, or it's probably more, you know, 10 million. The 10 million hardcore fans we have, we always know that no matter what we put out, we're going to sell 10 million copies. But that that just, you got to have new, like, you know, new blood coming in. You know, like you just said about the, the son that saw the game and tells his dad, oh, cool, dad, I want that. Mm-hmm. Um, you you need that. And Nintendo has always said that's what they represent. You're like, we're kind of like, we're the, we're the system for the the little kids. And we build that brand loyalty when when you're young and believe me i understand that like uh when someone's younger and if you can kind of ingrain yourself into their lifestyle you you kind of have them hooked in a sense right oh yeah um the the problem with that is kids then go to high school and they meet new friends that make fun of them for their baby ways and then you know you lose them along the way just due to life but um yeah, I, I, it's encouraging to see them say, OK, look, times have changed, you know, 30 years later. They're like, oh, things have changed. OK, I guess we'll start. Um, I don't want to be all praise. I will say, uh, man, it's almost like two, one game too little too late because where was all this online support when uh, Mario Party came out? Mm-hmm. You know, I wish I wish they kind of would have uh, pushed it more to the forefront there. Because I know I don't have it, but you guys have said, oh, man, like, we only got some modes online, and that could have been, like, (laughs) okay, one mode, great. (laughs) That could could have been, like, the big, huge, like, hurrah, like, this is what we can do with online. So that would have been cool to see with Mario Party. Um, But, yeah, I am liking where they are going with it. I'm I'm glad they're at least kind of, like, you know, trending in the right direction. Mel, what do you think? Well, it's very encouraging words. It's just from past, you know, actions. It's mm-hmm. kind of hard for me to believe some of them. Because, yeah, it's like, yeah, we need more online. Great. I expect whatever multiplayer game to come out to have it. But going from past experience, I know that's still not going to be likely the case. Like, I know there's going to be some game announced next year, like none of us know about. It's going to be some cool crazy multiplayer game and they're not going to talk about online because it doesn't have it 
then we're gonna have to have a show and it's like oh does this have online what, what do you think and then we get there and it's like oh it actually doesn't or oh, it's only one mode <sighs> i can still see this happening i don't obviously i don't want it to happen and Things like certain genre is not represented on Switch from them. It has to be from them themselves. It can't be like, oh yeah, we got this first person shooter. You know, Bethesda brought it over first. I'm like, no, they have to make one. It doesn't necessarily have to be like all the others that we have now. They it can still have some Nintendo spin to it, but they have to make it. And since we have some of these big blockbusters already out, like we're gonna have Animal Crossing next year. We're gonna have you know, Smash, we have a Mario, we have a Zelda, we have Cod, we have Splatoon. Like, all of those are already on the system. So I'm hoping that frees up some time. Maybe they can make something totally new. Or they can, re- you know, they can bring something from the past. Just retool it for modern purposes. Add on some of these cool things. And that can fill a genre that they themselves haven't done. It has to be from them. Because if it's from anyone else, yeah, it counts, but it's like half counts. It should count fully, but, you know, you know how we are. We don't see things like uh, the casual people do. Like, we're fine if it's like, oh, yeah, this is from the company I like. Yeah, this this counts. But from us, it's like, no, we got to see you. Because if they do it, it will bring more of those guys over. And like, even though I don't play a lot of those games, it's still important to have on the system. Because we want as many of these things as we can possibly get. And if they only stay in certain genres and keep doing over and over, I mean, that's great. They're really good at them, but let's spread out. Let's actually attempt something. So I'm hoping more of that. But I don't know if they're going to do that. I think they're still just going to handpick, you know, third parties. Like, hey, this guy has this genre we don't have. It counts. You know, that kind of thing. I'm hoping we'll see more from themselves, though. Are you cool with them doing things like they did with Starlink and Mario plus rabbits? Yeah, I'm fine with that too. Yeah. But I still want something from them. I want something built up, handcrafted from Nintendo themselves. Cause I know they can do these genres. Like I know they can do it. Which, just... which genre do you think is missing? <sighs> Visual novel. Well, I mean, I could say first person shooter, but I feel like Splatoon is trying to fill the void of the shooter for Nintendo. Yeah, kind of. That's more of a multiplayer. Like, let's focus on like single player. Okay, so like, a, mesh, like, like mesh without raids. a multiplayer attached, just single player, just itself. Like, I think they can do it. Or, or like even something like Eternal Darkness, something like that. Brings. We haven't really seen anything like that in a while from them. Oh, could you imagine what they could do with like? They could literally make your Joy Cons sing creepy songs to you. With the mm-hmm. HD rumble, mm-hmm. you know, that's one of the things with Mario Party. When it's your turn, your Joy-Con like whistles at you because the, the HD rumble can make can make sound. So you're like, what the? So, I mean, that'd be like, that'd be basically like survival horror. Then I'm all mm-hmm. about getting a shooter, but I definitely I personally need multiplayer with it. Like I, I want to see and I've said this before, but I want to see Metroid become um, the halo for Nintendo. I can see them adding a multiplayer section to the single player one, not just having it all multiplayer. Because I think they tried that. It's just they did it at the wrong time with the wrong system, you know? Yeah. It like, honestly, what I would love to see is, is instead of just the, like to actually have some forward thinking and this isn't everybody's favorite game. I realize that, but if Metroid was more like destiny, as far as like you actually leveled up as a bounty hunter and, um, played through the game with other people or did stuff by yourself. Like you could, you know, one way or the other do quests, do that kind of stuff, possibly raids and even, uh, and then have multiplayer on top of it. I know I'm asking for a whole lot. Like this is way <laughs> forward thinking, but I mean, I fun. would, I would love that, that world, you know, like I would love to see that world expanded upon and, but to see it in a, in a genre of game that nobody would expect from Nintendo. Nobody would expect that. And the, it, at very, at the most, we'll probably see something similar to halo one that you have a campaign, maybe have some co-op, maybe doubtful, and then online multiplayer, right? Might be a thing because we saw that with the other Metroids. Metroid 
uh, two and three had multiplayer. I don't believe three even had online though. I think it was just uh, um, couch couch multiplayer. So um, I think I think for Metroid, um, the way I see that going, and maybe this isn't the greatest example, but Resident Evil Five, where oh, look they very actiony. Well, more actiony, but also if you did have co-op, it's like you're helping each other. Like, Chris, 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 Sheva, yeah. Sheva, <laughs> Samus, 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 Samus. Um, but you know, just something where it's like, okay, we're we're together, but we're not just together shooting things. Like we're here because you have to help push this person on top of the box, and then I go and pull a lever. And then it opens a door and that would totally fit with Metroid too, because it's always, it's always been yeah. about puzzles and, and trying to figure out how to get to the next area and exploration, that kind of stuff. Like uh, I, I, again, it would just be, it would be crazy to see something taken to just another level, not to be, to actually far um, exceed our expectations versus just being, okay, we're pretty sure we know what we're getting. Yeah. And they could they could do all the the modern day things, especially I think with Met- I think Metroid Four would be a good uh, platform to be like, okay, let's sell skins in the eShop. Now I know some people are probably rolling their eyes, like, oh great, I'm gonna have to pay to get the coolest armor. Please, please don't do that. But maybe it doesn't have to see. That's that's where I think it's a fine line. You know you. Do you do you charge the player for the coolest armor or do you leave the coolest armor in the game and maybe just do like um, themed armor? And it depends how they did it in the game. Like, what if every single armor in the game had just slots? So it's not a matter of, oh, I need to buy the best armor to get the, you know, more slots. But it's no, it's just a skin. So um Maybe someone wants to buy that armor that's Princess Peach themed. I don't know. Like the thing I, I what see, that looks like. that's an amiibo. Is what it yeah, looks like. They would. They that's, would be like, hey, scan the amiibo. Scan your amiibo. The the thing that I've I s- always said I hate the amiibo thing because you're selling DLC in a limited Wait. product, mm-hmm. and you don't even know what you get when you get. Why it. not sell it online digitally and you'll sell a billion? Because they want to sell the toys. To people like Josh, because <sighs> they know he's going to buy two $13 things instead of you paying what, one $5 thing. That's the thing. But Josh, I mean, if it was only online, let's say everything that the Amiibo provide, you know, yeah, would but you, you would still buy those online, though, right? If they didn't have Amiibo? If, Personally, I wouldn't, but I know people would. But since yeah. Amiibo is a thing, you know, they're going to push that first. Especially, they would be putting these Smash ones, too. Yeah. If I mean, I don't want to get into a, a microtransaction debate or talk right now, but I think that like, I think what Nintendo has, has shown us is that they are putting it in, I don't know. I got to be careful the way I say this. I don't want to sound just like, um, I don't feel like they are being as greedy as other developers, right? Where they sell a $60 game and then there's all of these different microtransactions. And sometimes it's loot boxes that you don't even know what you're going to get. Right. They've continued to give free content to Splatoon since that game came out and then decided to sell a DLC story expansion, which I thought was okay. Cool. I mean, they've been giving us free stuff since the game, uh, released. And now, now they, they added and they even improved on, I would say, and I think most would say they improved on the single player experience in this, um, the Octoling expansion, right? They've had other, other cases where, I mean, Odyssey, they're still giving free costumes in Odyssey. Like what? Every, every month, every two months, there's something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just got like the zombie one. yeah. Yeah. Aces getting a free character and then a free mode where you can unlock different skins in the, uh, and Nightcrawler says giving. Cause in Odyssey, you've got to like grind so hard to get all the coins you need to pay for those things. I mean, it's easy if you just go to that one. There's that section. one bowling area, right? Where you get to be yeah. the bowling ball. You get like a whole bunch of coins. Yeah. It's, it's funny how, um, in, in games, you know, like you just talked about, you have to like grind for coins. Um, it, it's funny. Cause it's like, like you said, giving it, they're not giving it away. You, you do have to kind of work for it. Right. 
Mm-hmm. But aren't you playing the game that you like right. to get the thing that you want? Why is that a bad thing? Not at all. Like, no, no. And that's you know, not, that's not. And yeah, I, I think he's you know, more just making it comes a, off that way. Like if someone's like, oh, great. I got to play the game that I like to, to get this free item. Right. This is right. ridiculous. Like there's like you just mentioned, there's so many more like, I guess you could say like atrocious business practices out there that that people are doing, mm-hmm. you know, like. um I, I agree with you. I think Nintendo is doing a good job. Uh, like Xenoblade 2 expansion. From what I understand, and I haven't beat it yet, but it's like, you don't need it, you know? Like, the game, there's so much there without right. that expansion. It's not like you're like, oh my gosh, they, they totally stripped this out, and I don't even know the true ending without buying this additional $20 item. Like, that's not the case, you know? Well, um, knows, yeah. well okay. <laughs> But still, you know, it's like, I don't need to get it to get a, a complete story. And um, what was the other thing that we just mentioned DLC-wise? Um, Splatoon, Aces. Um, yeah, like, I mean, I don't even have the expansion for Splatoon. And I don't feel like, oh, I'm missing out. I, I didn't even completely beat the for the single player for Splatoon 2. Right? Most but, people didn't. Yeah, you know, but I, I don't feel like... Oh, I'm being cheated because I I can't play as an Octo Ling or I can't experience that story. Uh, no, I I still feel like I bought a complete game, and I think I think that's a huge thing too. If players don't feel that they're getting a complete product for sixty dollars, why am I going to spend an extra twenty to get a complete product? Mm-hmm. You know, whereas if I did get a complete product for sixty, oh, and there's now additional story. Cool. Yeah, I'll pay an extra twenty bucks or thirty. Right, as long as it's not on the disc already, because that upsets people. Um, <laughs> well, on the cart in this case. Yeah, on the cart. Yeah. So, and I mean, the thing is, though, how many how many times has this been brought up? Like, all we ever see online is people getting very upset about the fact that, like, oh, Star Wars Battlefront had this. They were trying to it was play. It was pay to win, and you know, like, but like when we kind of step back and look at Nintendo's given a a lot of free content with these switch titles. I mean, even, even Mario Kart. I mean, it's adding Labo, right? It's not like it's something super great, but I guarantee you there are families with small children who have raced with the stuff that they've built and have had an amazing time doing that. Right. Because, because none of us on this show have done that. And I mean, it's just not, that's not really going to be for our, um, you know, for us yeah but for for a little kid to get to like step on a gas pedal made of cardboard and turn a steering wheel and drive around in mario kart that way that's got to be i mean i would have loved that when i was like in second grade i would have been losing my mind going i have to have labo i have to you know give it all to me right so uh at the i mean at the end of the day even smash itself looks to have i mean it, it has so much stuff in it they could have broken that game. They could have sold DLC. They could have given us half those characters and sold the rest to us next year throughout the year. And that game, but they didn't, they're putting like probably 70 plus characters in this game. Plus like 108 stages plus, you know, seven days worth of music or whatever, (laughs) you know, like it's, it's, it is a complete, package and so it's it's good to see but the fact that they still want to focus on more and i like what you said mel that it yeah those are words those are those are those are nicely typed up words from a from a pr department saying here's what you can say right but if they act on those words we're going to be the ones that benefit from that and hopefully they do hopefully they do so that was uh we stayed on that one for a while. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, this four is hours later. Yeah. <laughs> there's uh lastly here. We'll just, we'll wrap up with this is there's a rumored Diablo theme amiibo. Some data miners found some hints. There might be a Diablo themed amiibo on the way. And I believe, uh, BlizzCon, right. Is, is on, it's is coming soon. Maybe where they, oh, wow. Announce yeah, something I like this. Probably should know these things. It's yeah. like right down the street. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, just peek out the window. Yeah. We might more than likely we'll see another GameStop exclusive Diablo Amiibo. <laughs> it's a, you know, and I've already seen the uh, the uh, 
uh, Dark Souls one selling for like forty five dollars. <laughs> only forty five. Yeah, only. Yeah, only depends on where you're looking, I guess. So, anyway. That's going to do it for episode 141. Destina, where can we find you? People can find me on the Discord under <laughs> Flex and Hot. And uh, yeah, I, I am going to get back on the streaming right now. I Like I said, I got new internet. Nice. So nice. I have been doing some test streams. Everything looks good. Everything looks stable. I guess it's just the... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Consistency? The, the, no, no, no. Uh, like the approach I want to take. Oh, I see. Um, gotcha. I don't know. So, if like how much liver, do you, do you want to play on this stream? Kind of. I don't know if my liver can take the approach I want to do, which okay. is like the stream doesn't end till this glass is empty type of stream. <laughs> We'll it's see really what happens. not good to I don't know. whiskey. I'm just going to throw it out there. I don't think, I don't think Josh be, can uh... plug yours. <laughs> it, it, it could be a glass of coffee. Why yeah. does your mind go there? Um, so we'll see what happens. That's coming soon. It's like I know. I, I don't have the proper tools to do it. Um, I think it was your liver not being able to handle it is what caused our minds to go there. That's I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, coffee could be bad for your liver. Whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. So... I would like to at least start doing it, um, even if it literally is once a day, like Sunday mornings, um, by the end of the year. So stay tuned. Okay. Right on. Mel, where can we find you? In the Discord. That's where I like to chit chat. Where I'll be at. <laughs> that's where she's at. She is. Mm-hmm. She is. Uh, if you do find her Twitter, I'm not going to say what it is. You will find some, uh, you will find some excellent gameplay. <laughs> oh yeah, all Usu- thirty seconds of it. Yeah. Usually, that's what it, Nintendo allows me. Usually, with her just crushing somebody in Splatoon or doing some amazing pizza delivery in Ultra <laughs> Pizza Titan or whatever. I mean, Ultra when Titan. I can, yeah, you know. yeah, when it when it works, when the game works. When I'm not going through cliffs, you know. Right, right. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, if you want to follow me. On Twitter, it's at N64Josh. Same as my Instagram. It's probably where I'm the most active is those two places. Of course, I'm in the Discord. You can go to N64Josh.com slash Discord to jump in there. You can follow this podcast at NPowerCast. Uh, The show notes for this episode will be available at N64Josh.com slash NPC141. You want to email us? It's NPC at N64Josh.com. Remember, if you want to get yourself a free book from Audible and help support this show, Go to audibletrial.com slash NPC. The chair I'm sitting in is from OPC. You go to n64josh.com slash OPC. You can automatically save $10 at checkout. Go check them out. They're awesome, awesome chairs. We have a Facebook group on top of the, and also the Discord, but the Facebook group is n64josh.com slash Facebook group. If you have a second and you can rate and review on iTunes, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Guys, if you want an extra podcast from me for just a dollar, you can go to patreon.com slash n64josh. And uh, I want to say thank you to everybody that's here with us live. I see Henny, Nightcrawler, Pudding, Shellshock, Rivenbell. Uh, I'm just scrolling up here. Anybody else that's just been lurking tonight, thank you guys so much for being here. We really, really do appreciate it. Remember, the schedule is going to be changing. If you're doing, if you're watching the live show, Thursdays is going to be about an hour or two earlier. So I will be streaming in the afternoon. We'll we'll kind of just switch it up. I'll put my notes together while I'm live, and then we will record the show. So, um, but it still will be every Thursday. The show will be coming out uh, at the same time each each week so um remember to check out the smash bros cast if you guys want more smash content you can find that on itunes google play and n64josh.com i think that's gonna do it destin thank you yeah mel's thanks no problem and eric's gonna be back next week hopefully he had some he had some issues with his with his dog so hopefully Hopefully everything's going good with that. So with that, guys, thank you so much for listening. I'll see you Thursday and you have a good one. Bye now.